my name is Abby. I work at the Ghosh Lab, and here's my ongoing project. The nervous system is a highly regulated system just because the two most important parts of human existence, the brain and the spinal cord, relies heavily on neurons. Now, neurons are very specialized cells with diverse compartments, mostly the axons, which is like the tail of the neurons, have to communicate with each other to be able to pass along messages from the brain and the spinal cord to the organ for any process in the body to happen. So this means that neuronal connections has to be specific. So axonal outgrowth has to be specific to be able to talk to a specific neuron that carries out a specific uh, function in the signaling pathway. Now, when we're born, we're born with way more synaptic connections that we need. So that's where the regulatory mechanism, mechanisms such as pruning uh, starts to happen. So we begin to remove unnecessary, conne unnecessary connections that we, don't, uh, that we don't need as we grow. Now, so this, uh, this connections, however, is critical for the nervous system, but it has to be specific. So any unnecessary connections can be detri detrimental, such as neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's, um, is an example of uh, unwanted axonal um, connection, axonal outgrowth. Now, I'm studying this with the aid of C. elegans. Now, there is a cell death program occurring in C. elegans called the compartmentalized cell elimination, specifically in the tail spike epithelial cell of C. elegans. It looks like a neuron because it also has a soma, it also has a process, and uh, it is supposed to actually die. The only difference between that and um, the neuron is it's supposed to die in the embryonic stage of a C. elegans worm, but the, and the, the process of this uh, C, uh, compartmentalized cell elimination, or CCE, um, as I will begin to say, is rely, reliant on set three or caspase activity. So once set three or caspase activity is lost, the tail spike cell no longer dies at the embryonic stage. So it means it might persist into adult stage. So my objective with this uh, project was to first confirm the tail spike cell persistence in set three mutants and ex examine if there are any additional process growing with age and also to examine any connections between uh, mitochondria um, and also understand the molecular players in, in the aberrant uh, cell outgrowth. Now to do this first, I obtained a cell th set three mutant and uh, imaged them and looked at the, the, the normal tail spike cell. And I also noticed that with age, so since the, the set three mutants um, do not have a uh, cell death. So the tail, uh, the tail spike cell did survive into the L4 stage. So I started looking at the L4 stage, which is old enough. And I noticed outgrowth, additional processes in, in addition to the posterior process. Now I noticed that the percentage of um, persistence of the normal tail, tail spike cell did decrease with, with time. So I looked at L4 and then L4 after 24 hours and L4 after 48 hours. And I noticed that there was an increase in percent percentage of the outgrowths compared to the normal tail, tail spike cell, which confirmed the persistence of tail spike cell and also did confirm that the age is a factor here. So, and then I noticed that the additional extensions were randomly directed. I noticed some that were anterior, some that were posterior, in addition to the, the, to the original posterior process. And I noticed some with multiple spikes, and I noticed some with just one um, extension. So I decided to categorize them just to organize things and to look at each phenotype uh, separately. And I did categorize them into short, long, single, multiple extensions. And those that don't fit, in any of that category, um, I categorize as other. So I looked at each phenotype and just noticed their uh, percentage persistence. And I also noticed that with time, starting at, starting at L4 and then L4 after 24 hours and L4 after 48 hours, I noticed that with time, there was a percentage increase in the long um, single and the long multiple extensions. And of course, uh, adversely, there was a decrease in the short single and the short multiple um, uh, uh, extensions, which, did suggest that age is a factor and also could suggest that the short ones with time get longer. So there's additional um, components being added to make them into the long extensions. Now, this is still pre preliminary data. I'm still working on looking at determining if there's a peak in growth. So I'm working on looking at L4 after 72 hours or you know just determining if there's a peak. And also I'm planning to look at aging genes, um, looking at the involvement of the mitochondria and the plasmic reticulum, and also looking at uh, environmental signaling, mechanotransduction, and other things. Yeah, the, the, the list is endless here. 